In this lecture, the first on a series about the upper limb, we're going to look at the surface anatomy and osteology of the entire upper limb. So we're going to look at the surface anatomy of the shoulder, the arm, the forearm and the hand, all of these regions making up the upper limb. And then we're going to move on to the osteology. We'll look at the clavicle, the scapula, the humerus, ulna, radius, the carpal bones, the metacarpals and the phalanges. And in each of these bony structures, we'll look at specific landmarks. And these are important for muscle attachments. We'll then finish by looking at the various movements that are performed by the upper limb, which is a complex part of the appendicular skeleton, enabling a great arrangement, a great range of movements. So if we just look at the general arrangement of the upper limb, then on this slide, we can see we have a nice body plan of both the male here and the female. And on the male, we can see indicated we've got the upper limb. Specifically, we've got the arm region here, which is connected to the trunk by way of the shoulder, which we'll talk more about here. And then connecting the arm to the forearm, we have the elbow joint, which we can see here. And then most distally, furthest away from the main core of the body, we find we have the hand. The hand member connected to the forearm via the wrist joint. On this picture here, we can see a anterior view of the upper limb and we can see more features, more surface features. We can see we have this shoulder region and we can see a region known as the auxilla. This is your armpit and we can see we have the deltoid, this muscular region that covers the shoulder joint, and we'll look at the deltoid muscle in quite some detail as that covers the shoulder joint. We then pass down distally towards the elbow, and between the elbow and the shoulder, we find we have the arm. We can see a groove here that is separating biceps brachii and triceps brachii here, and this we can see a nice little cleft is where you can palpate the brachial Archery. So with some important surface landmarks here. We can then move on to the elbow joint and we have a prominent bulge on the medial aspect of the elbow joint. This is known as the medial epicondyle and that's important because the ulnar nerve runs alongside this structure and we'll cover these details throughout this lecture series. We then pass distally from the elbow joint and we see the forearm. We can see the anterior region of the forearm. We have a prominent bulge on the lateral surface of the forearm. And this is due to a really important muscle known as brachioradialis. So we can see a bulge here caused by brachioradialis. We can then move distally again and we can see the hand. The hand is connected to the forearm via the wrist joint where the phalanges, where the carpal bones connect to the radius and the ulna to form this wrist joint. And we can see we have the palm of the hand, and then we can see we have the thumb, the index finger, the middle, the ring, and the little finger that make up the digits of the hand. So these are some key surface landmarks we can see on the anterior aspect of the upper limb. If we look at the posterior aspect, then again we can see we have this muscular region here caused by the mass of deltoid muscle. And then we can see the posterior region. We can see some impressions for the various heads of triceps muscle. Again, we can see the medial epicondyle, this time from the posterior view, just as we saw it on the anterior view here. We can see the olecranon, this bony prominence on the posterior surface of the elbow. Once again, if we move into the forearm, we can see we have this posterior aspect here. And again, on the medial aspect, so running along the same aspect as the thumb, this medial aspect here, we can see we have brachioradialis. If we pass to the hand once again, we can see the thumb, index, middle, ring and little fingers again that make up the digits and we can see this dorsum of the hand. Remember the forearm is connected to the hand via the wrist joint and we have two what are known as styloid processes of the radius and the ulna and we'll look at these in detail when we look at the osteology but both these styloid processes of the radius and the ulna, the radius being lateral, the ulna being medial, 
then we can see these bony prominences and these can be palpated at the wrist joint. You just completed your first video of the world's best medical exam preparation. Lecturio brings the knowledge of worldwide leading medical experts and teaching award winners to your PC, tablet, or smartphone. Prepare yourself and check your progress with thousands of quiz questions, customized to US MLE standards. And the very best, you can get in touch with our medical experts personally. Visit Lecturio.com now and continue with the most inspiring medical education around the globe, anytime, anywhere.